Yes. Hi, Chris Robeson uh, with the Blue Revolution. We're AD 70, Progressive Slate. Uh, here's the problem. I spent this afternoon with the Women's Study Group in Long Beach mm -hmm. and uh, had a conversation with Mayor Garcia, mm -hmm. who's one of the people we helped get elected, mm -hmm. who will be concerned when you win and Eric Bauman stays in Los Angeles as chair and there'll be retaliation against any elected official who comes against Bauman mm -hmm. in this election. Mm -hmm. That's only a problem in LA County. The question is, how are we going to be able to convince the electeds mm -hmm. to have the backbone yeah. to stand up against this to expand that table? Yeah. Who says we have to have 2,000 delegates? Yeah. Why can't we have 3,000 yeah. or 4,000 yeah. if we get more people at that table, make the table bigger? Yeah, yeah. So a couple things. So one, altogether, it's going to be about 3,300 delegates. Uh, they are bucketed, if you will, in three buckets. Uh, so what Chris is talking about is assembly district delegates. That's the first bucket. And those three buckets, by the way, are almost evenly divided, a third, a third, and a third. So the 3,300 over three buckets, assembly district delegates. Those elections are coming up in January. They're very important. Um, the second bucket is central committee delegates. So uh, there are 58 counties in California, um, almost all of them. I think there are four or five counties that don't have central committees, but for the most part, um, all 58 have central committees. And there are delegates that are elected through their central committee. The third bucket, the acronym for it is PLEO, P-L-E-O. For all intents and purposes, it's superdelegates. It stands for party leaders and elected officials. So everybody from Senator Feinstein all the way down through our constitutional officers and our legislators are themselves delegates. And each one of them, depending on where they are in the pecking order, have a bucket of delegates that they control. So some of them, like the Speaker of the Assembly and the uh, President Pro Tem, control 30 delegates, right? So one of the things and one of the changes in terms of democratizing this Democratic Party um, is neutralizing that or making sure that it's one vote, one voice. Yes, you are an elected official. That's fantastic. You get one vote. You don't get to sort of stack the deck, if you will. So neutralizing that by bringing in other additional um, buckets, if you will, of delegates so that more of the people's voices uh, uh, is heard as opposed to having it drown out uh, by the elected official. So that's definitely one thing I want to uh, I want to explore. The second thing is with respect to the fear. It's not just here in LA County. Trust me. I've been all over this state and I have had people tell me to my face. We want to support you, but we're afraid of retribution. Uh, and so there and so I want to talk about that a little bit. Right. Um, I want to talk about um, actually three narratives that have been framed about me uh, in this race and, and to dispel uh, every single last one of them. Uh, the first is that I'm a newcomer, okay. right? That I just got here, that I just arrived on the block. Uh, haven't put in my time, if you will. Um, for the seven years that I've been at Emerge California, we haven't just been grooming women to run for office. They haven't just been running and winning. And by the way, of the 400 graduates here in California, half of them have already run for office. Of the ones who've won, we have a 70% win rate. Um, and I'm so proud that Emerge women look like California. 56% of them are women of color. Um, but besides getting more voices, more perspectives um, elected to those bodies, um, these women, uh, we've been we've been party building from the ground up. These women have been active and engaged in their central committees. They've been active and engaged in their local Democratic Party. They've been active and engaged in the local Democratic Women's Club. They are serving as delegates. Uh, they are giving their time, talent, and treasure to this party, and they have been doing that for years. So the idea that I just got here, the idea that I just arrived on the scene, um, we talked about this uh, at the Progressive Caucus. Mm -hmm. It's another hard truth about this party, and that is that as a woman uh, and as a woman of color, uh, I have been invisible, right? I have been invisible, but I have been here the whole time. Uh, and so uh, if anyone says, oh, that Kimberly girl, she's new, she just got here, who does she think she, you remind them, no, she didn't just get here. She's been here the whole time. Uh, the second thing um, is that uh, I'm not progressive enough, right? Uh, and so another sort of hard truth uh, is that, um, and I was, I was sharing with uh, in San Jose, it may come as a shock and a surprise to you all, but I'm a black woman. <laughs> I know, right? Shocking. Um, 
I was surprised myself. Um, but, but, but the truth of the matter is that um, as a black woman, there are a lot of issues that I don't have the privilege to choose whether or not I want to be progressive on them, right? And so I think, again, in terms of the reflection and the soul searching that we should be doing, understand that we all have privilege. We all have privilege, different kinds of privilege. Um, as, a, as a woman who is raising two black children, know that I don't have the privilege to choose whether or not I want to be progressive on things like criminal justice reform, right? I don't have the privilege um, as someone who lives in the city of Richmond, who looks outside of my windows every day and sees the smoke plumes coming up from the Chevron refinery because I live that close to it. I don't have the privilege to, to decide whether or not I want to be progressive when it comes to environmental justice, right? So there are some things that are just hard coded in my DNA because of who I am. So when it comes to you know not being progressive enough, here's what I would say. Uh, I want to make sure that we give this party back to the people. I want to make sure that we take the power away from Sacramento. I want to get yes. big yes. oil, big tobacco, yes. big pharma, big special interests out of the party. Right. Uh, and, and to return the power back to the people. Uh, I, am prog I am as progressive as they come through and through, not because it's the cool thing to do or the it thing to do of the moment, it's because of who I am. Um, and the third thing, the narrative that's being painted about this race as it relates specifically to the fear factor, is that this race is a done deal. That there is no race, that it's already been won, that it's, it's, uh, there is no competition. For those of us who are in San Diego, I think it was very clear. Uh, not only is this a strong campaign, not only is this a viable campaign, not only is this a campaign that people are investing in so far to the tune of a quarter of a million dollars, uh, but we are a formidable campaign. Uh, and this race is completely wide open. And the people who will determine this race are the people who should determine the race, and that is the delegates. And don't let anybody try to intimidate you, try to scare you, try to shake you down, uh, or try to say that uh, if you decide to vote for one way, that there will be retribution to pay. To me, that is so undemocratic. That is not who we are as Democrats, and that is something that is worth fighting for. This is a reform campaign. This is about democratizing this party. It's about calling out that kind of behavior because that's the reason why I don't want to come to this party. Uh, and so those are the three things that I want to share. Uh, the fear thing is real, it, it extends beyond um, LA County, but one of the things that we have to do in the vein of having hard conversations and telling hard truths is to call that kind of behavior out, call it for what it is, and to demonstrate uh, you will not have to worry about uh, uh, retribution from from me as your next chair. You will not have to worry about me shaking you down or, or coming after you because you took a vote that was something that you felt uh, was the right thing to do. Uh, that's not what any leadership should be about. We have to do this differently uh, and that's really what this is about. It's about a different style of leadership and having that kind of culture reverberate from the top all the way down. For me, um, I think about when, you know, when I first registered to be a Democrat when I was in college at the age of 18, um, and what my um, definition of, uh, of a Democrat was. And for me, um, we were different. We were different than the Republicans. We were the party that cared about poor people, that cared about the homeless, that cared about children, that cared about making sure um, education was um, accessible to everybody. We were the people who cared about decent wages uh, for, for folks. We were the ones that cared about workers' rights. We were the ones that cared about women and women's reproductive justice. Um, we were the ones that cared about the environment. We were the ones that cared about our parents and our grandparents and, and the health and dignity of them and, 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 and family. And for me, I feel like we have, we have forgotten that. We have moved away from that. And I want to see us get back to that. I want to see us have pride in being Democrats. I want us to, to, to hold our heads up and to, and to shout from the mountaintops, we are Democrats, and for people to instantly know who we are, what we stand for, what we're about. 
uh, because of our values that, that, that show up in the votes that our elected officials are taking. And we are making sure that if those electeds are not doing their job to do the work of the people, we are voting them out. Uh, and so for me, the vision for this party um, here in California is to stand as a beacon of light for the rest of this country and really for the world. Because you all know as California goes, so goes the nation. And really California as the sixth largest economy in the world, we have a huge role to play on the international stage as well. Uh, and so I want us to get back to basics. I want us to rebuild our home and our house. I want us to open up our doors and welcome everybody in, in a real and genuine way, not just in a transactional way. Uh, we are building for the future. I have two children that are counting on us to get this right. And as a mother to one, I'm a mother to all. And this for me is about those babies. It is about my grandparents. It is about my in-laws. It is about so many seniors who I've talked to who have to cut their prescription medications in half because they can't afford to get the, you know, to get the full uh, prescription filled. This is about remembering who we are as uh, humanity. Uh, and so my vision is that this party here uh, in California uh, has a rebirth and a renaissance. Uh, and we get back to doing the, the business of the people uh, and, and stand as a beacon of light for the rest of this country. Describe, mm -hmm. but I've never really paid attention outside of the federal elections. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, you know, I agree with everything that you say, and I think maybe especially after this election, though, we, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of California. You know, we're, we're run by Democrats. We're the leader in investment in energy efficiency and renewable energy. We've, the way California voted this election was, was, you know, progressive, at, le at least relative to, um, th that's my perspective as someone not paying attention and, and um, to, to California politics, really. Um, but so how, you know, how is, is your, how do we convince people that, that we're not democratic enough without having to know kind of the inner workings of the Democratic Party? Yeah. Right. Like, I, I think that from from I mean, my perspective, again, is, is not paying attention to a lot of these inner yeah. workings is that like California right now is something to be proud of. And, and we have a super majority. Right. We're we're doing a lot of good things. And, and um, our leaders have said a lot of good things about what we're going to continue to do and and how we're going to protect minorities. So yeah. so how do yeah. we kind of differentiate to say we're, we're not doing enough? Yeah. Does that yeah. Make sense? Um, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say we're not doing enough. I would say it's a really important for us to drill down and pay attention to details, right? So in this last election, uh, California lost women in its state legislature. We are one of only nine states in the entire country that has lost women in its legislature for the past 10 years. As a state that said, we lost three. Uh, for a state that claims to, with a supermajority, to be pro-woman and pro-women's parity in politics, why is it that for the past 10 years we've been, um, we've been declining in the number of women running for and serving in our legislature? Well, one reason might be because it's easy for us to talk about and our leaders to talk about how they support women, but when it comes time to actually support them with money and resources, on average they've been supporting the male over the woman seven to one. Okay, so we got to drill down into the details because the devil's in the details, right? Uh, with respect to the environment, how many times did it take us to get a watered down version of the most recent uh, environmental bill passed? How many times did it take Lorena Gonzalez to get the farm workers uh, bill of rights passed? Okay, this supermajority, in my opinion, does, does a lot of things, one of which might actually be to allow for corporate Democrats to hide behind the supermajority, right? Mm -hmm. To not be courageous, to not take those progressive votes because right. they don't have to, yeah. right? So just because we have people who are 
waving the, the banner of, 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 of how great and good California is? Yes, we are in many ways. And we still have our own work to do here. And so with respect to those things, you know, um, I think it's important that we drill down uh, to the details and really pay attention to where we are making strides, where we are being really progressive, and where we are not, where we're just talking about it. Uh, one of the other uh, areas that I like to talk about, um, where our elected officials here in California like to talk about how, you know, progressive we are, how good we're doing, uh, is on campaign finance reform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Right, right. So, um, you know, if we really wanted to get money out of politics, we have a supermajority. Yeah, We've absolutely. had one before, right? Why haven't we done that, right? Because there are a lot of people on our side who make a lot of money uh, off of politics. So, so again, it's, it's, it, 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 let us, in this moment coming out of November 8th, really start to pay attention not just to the words that people are saying, not just to the buzzwords and to the, you know, the, um, the flowery and the um, you know, boasting about how great California is. Let us ask for details. Let us ask for specifics. Let us ask for you know, uh, proof of, of where we've been making progress. Because if we actually do that, I think what we'll find is that in, in many ways, California is a leader. And in many other ways, we are only mediocre uh, or worse, education. 20 years ago, we used to be fifth in the country. Right. Today, we are like 47th in the country in terms of how much money we spend uh, per pupil on education. And how our kids do. And how our kids do, exactly. So I think it's really important that we um, you know, really ask the tough questions, drill down and look at the details and say, yes, there are some great things that California has done and continues to do, and there's still room for improvement. Yeah, well, so, um, you know, here's the, here's the deal with being the, uh, the outsider, right, and the, um, the, uh, the non-establishment candidate. Um, there are not a lot of courageous people uh, and people who have the courage of their conviction. So uh, the biggest endorsement to date is the California Nurses Association. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and um, I will also say we have a lot of allies who are for now uh, 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 on the sidelines, which is, is, is where we want them to be for, uh, for right now. Um, we have a lot of local elected officials who, um, because they don't have to worry so much about the threat of retribution, are able to, to come out. But um, we, we made it very clear from the very beginning when we came out last year, and I had to come out in September of last year because my opponent was going around racking up endorsements because he said there's no one else in the race. Uh, so we sort of had to come out. So in the last uh, year, uh, we have um, been having these kinds of conversations uh, with, uh, with folks. And what I will tell you is this. Um, come January, when I'm able to devote my full time and, and effort to this, you will see a, um, a call to action for folks uh, that includes calling our legislators, calling our elected officials, and having uh, those kinds of conversations with them uh, of, uh, and asking them to, uh, to support. So uh, we look forward to, uh, to building that list. Uh, but right now we're working with what we have because the truth of the matter is um, we're not looking for the usual suspects. We're not looking for the usual endorsements, right? We're looking for people who are ready to do this in a different kind of way and not just a quid pro quo, sort of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We know how this game is played. We want to keep it, keep it going, keep the power and the money consolidated in certain hands. And quite frankly, I don't want those endorsements anyways. Yeah. I've, I've been a Democrat, though I find it sometimes hard to be mm -hmm. a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And the reason I find it hard to be a Democrat is that I read all the wonderful things and then I watch the votes. Yep. And so I'm asking what the party can do to hold our elected officials accountable to the platform that we have embraced. Mm -hmm. um, and what will you do as chair to facilitate that? Again, given yeah. the three buckets, it's mm -hmm. not so easy, but. Yeah. Well, I actually think it's a lot easier than people think. And I, I would say for starters, I would have them read that platform <laughs> that we have. That, would be sure, that yeah. most of them don't. Yeah. Most of our elected officials have never read the Democratic Party platform. Most of our legislators have never read the Constitution of California. Right. So how about we start with reading it? Yeah. 
right? Uh, and uh, that's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. You read it. Um, and then as far as holding them to account, that is where I get to use my bully pulpit to call them out, to say it, your vote does not actually match uh, with what you said your stated principles and values were as a Democrat. Um, I also think we put, uh, we put pressure on them, right? I think for, um, I think a lot of these elected officials are more concerned with protecting their incumbency mm -hmm. and protecting the money and power than they are with doing the work of the people. And so it is our responsibility to remind them, to call them out, and to say, hey, listen, we get it. Uh, as, a, as a legislator, you don't make a lot of money, you know, what, 95000 or what have you. We know you could be making more money as a lobbyist. Some of you actually do, <laughs> right? <laughs> So if you want to do that, if this no longer works for you, that's great. We will find someone who can run in your place. I think we should. I absolutely. Well, here's the thing. I also don't think that people should get automatic endorsements just because you're an incumbent, right? <laughs> you know, let's let's take a look at the voting record, right? Let's let let's let's look at that, right? So, you know, I think, again, there are going to be a lot of people, right, the status quo, who aren't going to be so comfortable with some of the things I'm saying. But the truth of the matter is, um, it's time for some change. Uh, and a lot of us who have been Democrats, I've been a Democrat for over 25 years, since I was 18. And I will tell you, to the, the comment about, you know, it's not your turn, I, I've had over two dozen people, progressives, tell me to my face. It is not your turn. I'm sure they're also African American too, right? You, black, white, mm -hmm. Hispanic, gay, straight, NorCal, SoCal. It is not your turn. Who do you think you are? Go run for secretary instead, oh, yeah. right? Oh. The progressive Democrat, right? So, so I think that it is time for um, a new way of doing business. And the way that we're going to do business now is the right way. We're going to do it with the people in mind. What is, what is good and right and just for the people? Not what is good and right and just for you protecting your incumbency and protecting power uh, and money. No more of that. We're doing business a different yeah. way. Good, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. No, well, I, again, I want to thank you, Barbara. Uh, thank all of you for coming out. Um, this is the beginning of a lot of uh, conversations, right? Yes. Uh, it is time for us as a family, as the Democratic Party family, to, to uh, facilitate difficult conversations uh, and to tell hard truths about where we are and where we want to be, to redefine what our values are, uh, to talk about what, we've, what we care about in, uh, in this country, in this state, uh, and how we want to make it better. Uh, it is up to us to do that. It wasn't the Republicans who found themselves out lost in the wilderness. It was us. Uh, and so what we need to do right now, I believe, is to look around, uh, to gather together, uh, to use the diversity uh, that we have, uh, which is a strength, uh, and to map our way forward to our true north. Um, it's, um, it is in us. It's hard-coded in our DNA, what our values are. It's just up to us to remember that. And I think the way we do that is by coming together collectively uh, to rebuild this party from the ground up. We can do it. I'm in this fight to do it. Uh, roll up my sleeves, get to the hard work of rebuilding this party for the future. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.